Today it's a two for one day. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my ticket to late. I am so excited to finally bring you these. This is one of the 12 days of composition books. I don't know what number we're on, so I'm going to call it a bonus. I've been wanting to show you this for quite some time. So we're doing hashtag comp book love and hashtag flip through Friday, which is an open collaboration brought to us by the wonderful Christina at Christina's Shack. That means anyone can use the hashtag. Just tag her in, give her a little shout out so that she knows to go find out what's happening with her hashtag and it's so fun to see what everybody does differently with our hashtags i have some of my own hashtag comp book love is one of those same thing it's an open collaboration if you're doing some really cool things with composition books or you just love composition books use my hashtag give me a shout out let me know so i can go find out what you're up to with these wonderful fabulous staples of our craft we're going to start with Comp Book Love and the 12 Days of Composition Books. I got this idea from Cat Hand years ago when I first started doing junk journaling. She would do a craft project or some kind of painting project and whatever was left on her palette she would put in her book of unwasted paint. Simple concept. It's, it's beautiful <laughs> and I've been doing it ever since I learned about it. I have this regular composition book which is a hundred sheets i have this steno book and i just started a miniature composition book of unwasted paint as well that doesn't have very many pages done in it so it's not even worth sharing yet but i've been wanting to do a flip through of these when they're done and something like this is never really done and my measure of it was when all the pages were full well i'm still quite a ways away from that in that these all either are blank or they can they could use some extra because sometimes there's not a lot of paint left over <laughs> and so you just do that clean off your brush i started doing it using this when i watercolor too instead of swish swish swishing my brush into the water to clean it off first i bring it to this and i just doodle most of it off then I swish 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 in the dirty water before I go into the clean water and start painting some more so a lot of these pages still need some work but here's what happens you just start adding layers and adding layers now if I'm painting something in these colors I'll add it to this page I won't add it to a page that it doesn't really go so I try to organize them by by color family and it's it's not too strict you know strict this one has every color isn't that awesome it's just so fun some pages have every color under the rainbow and other pages just have a, a limited color palette and i try to coordinate accordingly at first i was doing both sides of the page but then you have to decide which which cool thing do you want? So I stopped doing both sides of the paper and I only do one. It's fun to come up with different color schemes. And I do, I also try to do different brush strokes each time. I, I'm When I'm painting, I'm using different brushes. So they're going to leave different marks. So I try to do all different kinds of things throughout. At the end of this video for my Flip Through Friday, I'm just going to quick go through each page because for most of us that is a delicious wonderful bit of eye candy to see all the color schemes and all the different brush strokes and whatnot so that'll be at the end but for comp book love what do you use this for once they're all filled up well i'm filming this right now because i want to start using these pages for a different hashtag that my dear friend amy over at doki doki forest started called piles to poems i want to start using some of these pages for that open collaboration but i didn't want to tear any out or use any before i did the flip through so you could do that you could do piles to poems which means just grabbing some fun groups of words from your collection, your piles and piles of words and phrases that you've cut out for your ATC cards, your artist trading cards, or your altered books, or your junk journals, or your journaling cards, or whatever it is that you have pulled these out for, you have probably far more than you can use on those projects. And hashtag 
piles to poems and it doesn't have to be poetry it doesn't even have to rhyme it can be other things watch my video on that either out already or coming soon because i have different ways i don't do poetry very much or very well or very often i don't even like poetry quite frankly so i have a different take on it but i'm using the same hashtag because it's all the same idea is taking these little words and phrases and collecting them and putting them into different fun funny poetic rhyming some you know they're not all fun fun some can be deep and thought provoking some can be nonsensical some can be haiku you know it's whatever you want to make of it and i want to start using some of these pages for that project you can also start doodling on them you can stamp on them just start keep adding layers and adding layers i did some stamping next i might do posca pens over the top more stamping and then put your words on top and or use this tear these up and use them in collage i have an entire mini junk journal that's all these yellow and orange sherbet colors so i could tear this out and use as a background for that or tear up into pieces to make a collage for that project or clusters for that project so there's just tons of stuff that you can do with this practice your doodle work draw mandelas over it do practice lettering over it if you're trying to do lettering it's always nice to have a background take something like this could be easily worked into a, a pen and ink of a let's say this is a river a reflection in the river and these are forest or it could be a cityscape you know just do some pen work over it but having these backgrounds really helps a lot to get you started so you're not staring at a blank page going what am i gonna do something like this gets you gets you going pretty easy so that's ha hashtag comp book love one of the 12 days of christmas bonuses is start collecting all the paint that would normally go either down the drain or on a paint rag or in a thing of dirty water before it goes down the drain clean your brushes off in here and collect all this wonderful yummy 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 stuff there was one right here this is coffee this was leftover coffee that i had that i just threw on this page it got on it got sort of everywhere but this page i used a little bit of leftover coffee so i encourage you to start at least one composition book of unwasted paint now it's important to use a book that is sewn my mini one that is this size is not sewn they fall apart the pages come right out of them if they are see they're just glued and and they fall right out if if you get too much water on them and that's no fun to do something like this and have it all fall apart so make sure they're sewn whatever it is sewn or a spiral bound those those hold up pretty well certainly better than something that's glued so start yourself a composition book of unwasted paint and you'll be amazed how fast it fills up which is pretty cool and some of the things that you end up with I colored all over mine. Number one, I wanted to test out some new markers that I got. And so I just, I wanted to know how they worked on white and how they worked on black. And I started several of these, but I would lose them. I know I started a comp book of unwasted paint. Where is it? Well, I didn't know. So I started another one. I think I did that three or four times. So finally, when I got the new markers, I just colored this one all up. I keep it in one spot all the time like my keys and now i don't lose it ever i did both sides just for fun these are the vintage colors vintage colors and the bright so on to flip through friday but i'm just gonna flip through watch it at your own pace enjoy this was done with a sponge i was sponge painting something and i i sponge painted this round brush who knows and can I just, I want to just do this for you. Can you hear that? Once you start putting paint in a little bit of water, it doesn't take much, but it changes the paper and it gets that wonderful, crispy, it's totally different than the paper in a brand new one. You hear that? Versus it has an extra bit of crispness to it.
once there's paint and water on it. I use metallic paint sometimes. Those work just as well. And again, pages have, you know, more to go. This might have been a pull off my extra large ceramic tile that I got at Home Depot. It works kind of like a gel plate. Not really, but you can pull prints from it. That's pretty fun. And when it was all watered down, I think that's how I got this. This is a big acrylic brush with acrylic paint. All paints work for this. I wouldn't probably do oil, but I would do, I have done watercolor, acrylic, craft paint, metallic paint, all kinds of different shimmery paint. There's some sparkly, just kind of a Maleficenty page. Ooh, shiny. Black and brown and gold. Might not think it, it's an excellent color scheme, but I think it really works. I think that's very elegant. That would be beautiful in the background in a vintage book of some sort. Spattering is always an option. A lot of these are this big junk brush. Just cleaning that brush off. You get sort of a wood grain effect, especially with that weathered wood color. Even though I only did the one side, it was really watery and it bled through. So if I wanted to, I could work on this side too, pull this out, fold it in half, and it'd make an excellent addition to a junk journal. All of these would. In that case, you could certainly do both sides if you wanted to add pages like this to your junk journal. Do both sides, by all means. But for what I'm going to do today, I'm going to glue some of these things down and tear them up. And so I don't want something awesome on the back. So you kind of have to decide going in how you're going to do it. This is one of my favorite combinations. You'll see it a lot because there's so much going on there and I just love it. But I like the purple and green and the blue and green. I love it all. These are, these are all my colors. And when you do something like this, it could be days or months or sometimes a year between, you know, putting that first layer of light blue down and then 4th of July comes around and I'm doing something patriotic and I have that other blue out. Well, that would go with that blue. And then another project, weeks and weeks down the road, I have a lot of white. So then I find a page to put the white. So it doesn't happen all at once, these pages. As you see, some of them are are quite stark. A lot of brush strokes, just simple cleaning off the brush. That's got a lot of fun stuff going on in it. Just starting out. It's the first layer. There's not much to it. Very the brush strokes vary the kinds of brushes you know and i don't i don't work from this i work whatever project i'm working on if it calls for a round watercolor brush well that's what i'm using if it calls for a flat acrylic brush that's what i'm using that's what ends up being worked here but that's why you see the different shapes and sizes of brush strokes because it's all different brushes There's next to nothing on here, but it gives me a place to start. Nice bright. I think this came when I was doing my dad's 4th of July. Excuse me, his Father's Day gift. It was all patriotic themed, so I was using a lot of red, white, and blue. There's just a lot going on there. Sponge painting. I 
but doesn't your mind just start working like oh that that looks like a good thing with your doing ladybugs and this looks from a distance at a glance like fly fishing ties you know there's all kinds of possibilities as to what these things could go with or help along or add to sometimes i start in the center and work my way across I love these stormy, stormy colors. It's blue and black and brown. And they just make the best rainy day, thunderstorm feeling kind of moods. Lots of gold going on here. Super fall colors. This would make great cut out leaves or punch leaves with all those beautiful fall colors. These, what look like pen marks, are actually from this. It's called, at Cheap Joe's Art Stuff, it used to be called an Euler Boiler. Go figure. But it's just a twist off top. You fill it with liquid, ink, watered down paint, watercolor, dye, fun sprays, whatever. And it has a needle, a super sharp needle tip. And the liquid comes out that little tip. And I was trying to empty this bottle. So I was doing all of these doodles and hash marks and squiggles and whatnot. These are so fun to use. I don't know what else it's called. Bottle with a needle tip. I, I don't know. Oiler Boiler. At, I can always remember that name at Cheap Joe's. Fun, different kind of grungy industrial color scheme. But that yellow gives it a certain pop. It looks like a neon yellow. I use those colors a lot. Tell me in the comments below, what would you do with these pages? You had this full book of yumminess. What would you do? What are some ideas that are coming up in your head as you look through this fabulous collection of what would have gotten thrown away? This, you'll see a lot in this book, it's this favorite old, it's just a crappy craft brush that's an angled flat, but it's separated. I don't know if you can see that, how it's separated here. <laughs> and it makes these wonderful, weird marks. They look like pussy willows or little fuzzy tails of something or fuzzy little fo footprints of some critter. Are you seeing some different color combinations that you might want to try? Let me know in the comments.
there's that one i'm gonna go sideways with this it'll just be easier although most of them most of them it won't matter but there's one in here at least i think there is little watercolor flower doodles I have a video out called Stop Wasting Paint. And the whole idea is use that extra paint to build your skills. So all of these flowers were made with paint that was left over on my palette. They're just little doodles. They're nothing. They're just little tiny doodles. Now, I could bring them to life by putting in some darker greens or some ink work. I'd love to tear this out and put it in. I have a yellow and blue project I'm working on. That would go great, sort of, in there. Same thing here. Just by adding a little bit of pen work, they're, they're okay just the way they are. Tear them up. Use them on as your center focal point for clusters. Glue a whole bunch of them together and make a belly band. I mean, there's so many things you can do. And again, this was unwasted paint. It wasn't that I set out to paint flowers one day. It's just what I was doing with my leftover paint that day. So we'll go back to the beginning. I just didn't want to show you that one sideways. Stamped on after. Can you see there's an eye there? Like the, is it called the evil eye? Whatever's on our money. We have this on our dollar bills. Looks like that. Oh, Masonic symbol. Whoo, scary. This has a couple stamp layers on it. I do believe the black dots are Posca pen over acrylic acrylic watercolor doesn't really matter but i'm just pointing out you can do anything and you can mix and match i put acrylic over watercolor in here vice versa all the time this was a stamp of some sort i don't know if i was stamping something i don't know how it got here i put a whole bunch of ink on or a paint on an index card and put it down and peeled it up i don't know but it's been stamped Here I did use some of this already. I, I did pull something out because I thought it was done enough to go ahead and use. And you don't have to do the whole page the same all the time. You can just do a couple of this and a little few circles and then some scraggly lines and it doesn't have to be a whole page of anything. Watercolor with Posca pen and white gel pen watercolor this was cleaning off my brayer during a gel plate printing event here that's what this is just cleaning off the brayer which is also fair game Whatever mark making tools you're using, if you're doing a craft project and you're using stamps, clean them off in here. Uh, if you're using all different homemade type of stamps or mark making things, once you get them all, you do your craft thing. Once you get all that done, then clean them off in your book here. This is cleaning off bubble wrap from the gel plate event. This is an Avery sticker that came off on the gel plate and I just stuck it down in here rather than trying to keep track of it. More brayer, more brayer, more brayer. It was a lot, we, we jelly plate printed for a while. <laughs> this is just watercolor, taking my brush and cleaning it off before I put it in the water and swish it around. I'd be painting yellow and then I, before I went into my water, kind of got it. If you have a rhythm when you're painting, you kind of have to break that rhythm in order not to go directly from project to water. <laughs> you know, you kind of got to. But once you do, it's oh so worth it. Same thing, just different brush strokes. Very faint, but still, I think it's pretty cool. Something to build on. I bought a whole tin. I bought the tin because I wanted the tin. But inside the tin were a whole bunch, I think, I don't know, 30 some or 40 some Sharpie fine liners, ultra fine point Sharpies. And I wanted to make sure they all worked. And so I just did them in here. I just doodled with them. Most of them worked. 
I kept most every one of them. And the ones that didn't, I threw away. Because I could throw stuff away. Yes, I can. I was trying out a stamp for the first time. A couple stamps. Whoops. That's fun. Pink and gray is always fun. More brayer. More brayer. More brayer. More brayer. You get the point. Look at all the color going on here. Trying to get super close for you. So you can just see all the color play. Isn't that just scrumptious? Beautiful teal, dark, dark teal color. This was, I had the gel plate all filled with paint and I took probably a jar lid and put it in that wet paint and instead of just wiping it off, I put it off here. And so again, you get it in just a ridiculous amount of color play in each circle. Purple and green and teal and blue and orange. Orange and yellow. Purple, teal, pink. Yummy. those colors and love to add some silver to that I think that would be great some metallic white gold watercolor sometimes they get carried away I got it all the way up in here and they stuck together and that's all right just adds texture it's fine it's good and sometimes you think oh my god it looks like Walt Disney threw up but you can knock that down with a layer of white gesso or a thin layer of white acrylic or once you put stuff over it or cut this down you know if you just had a little piece of it it's not nearly as overwhelming like just that little piece in a collage would be magnificent so don't panic if it kind of looks a little like out of control it's fine it's fine Trying out some of my homemade stamps. This would be nice with some metallic in it, maybe some coppery color or a light warm gold. What is it? It's texture. Cleaning off stamps at the gel plate print. The gel plate was full of ink. Take the stamp, make the mark. When you pull it off, it pulls all the paint off. That's how it leaves the mark when you pull your, to do your gel plate pull. No reason to wipe that off. Put it down on something. I've used this. I had a couple pages of this and I've, I've used one up already. These were just some doodles and scribbles I was trying to get in my repertoire. Some fun little doodles, but that's a story for another day. I, this doesn't happen overnight. These, I have been working on these, like I said, I learned from it from, from Cat Hand maybe five years ago. And I've been just adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. This is not an overnight project. This, this is hundreds of different projects hundreds of different projects throughout the course of all these years so it's not an instant gratification thing but it is very gratifying to have it i can't tell you how often i flip through it just to hear it just just for that i flip through it a thousand times so 
Hashtag comp book love. Bonus art. A composition book of unwasted paint. And enjoy it. Make it a habit. You'll be amazed at what kinds of things you come up with. Thank you so kindly for hanging around. Between now and when we meet again, go love up your Beasleys. Give them extra hugs and kisses. And if they're standing there looking at you or crying, don't ignore them. They don't ask much. Go over there and love them up. Give them a cookie. Let them out. Give them some of your time. You won't regret it. Because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. Mate at the lake. Oh, for now.